So there's this interesting thread in your work. So you talk about pop culture and art, but there's always a kind of political element to it. And that, that's why I like this uh, format of yours, where pop and politics, you know, you never can separate it from each other. And popular culture always was related to what was going on in the society, basically. So everybody, all these kids, the second and third generation kids in Germany, they had also, you know, things to say about the discrimination, about being at, in the poor schools, you know, about, you know, being in, in uh, living in ghettos and stuff. So that went as lyrics, you know, into the songs. Welcome to Pop and Politics, your guide to art and culture in Turkey. I'm your host, Kenan Besat Sharp. Each week we host an artist, musician, director, writer, actor, or other creative worker in Turkey. And this week we are joined by Cem Kaya. Born in 1976 in Germany, Kaya is a filmmaker from Bavaria. After studying communication design, he first worked as a producer, editor, and director for commercials and music videos. Together with his film producer, he made his first two feature-length documentaries, Arbex in 2010, about the music and culture of internal migration in Turkey, and Remake, Remix, and Ripoff, about the Turkish film industry Yeşilçam and Turkish knockoffs of Hollywood films. Cem Kaya uses extensive found footage and archive material of various kinds in his works. He also works as a cinematographer. His latest documentary, which we'll talk about today, is Love, Deutschmarks, and Death. It won the Panorama Audience Award at the Berlin Film Festival, where it had its world premiere in 2022, in addition to other awards. The film described the German Federal Republic's 1961 recruitment agreement with Turkey, which not only brought workers, but their music. The documentary tells the stories of the band Derdi Oklar, Radio Yulmaz, the protest rocker Cem Karaca's exile in Germany, and many more stories, which are testament to the unique liveliness of Turkish music in Germany. The documentary is now showing on the digital platform Mubi. Jam, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for the invite. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, so I want to ask about the origins of this new film first, where the idea came from for you. That started in 2014. Friends of us, uh, Bülent Kulukcu and Imran Ayata, they released an album, a compilation in Germany called Songs of Gastarbeiter. And then for the first time, we recognized somehow that there is a unique uh, culture by migrants from Turkey in Germany. Um, musicians who um, produce where we're producing their music in Germany and then also uh, record labels who were there, who there was a huge market back then, uh, starting from the 60s and yeah, mid 60s. And so it was also very famous, that topic back then in Germany. Um, some artists um, had a second career over this compilation and um, and also the newspapers would write about it, exhibitions uh, and so on and so on. And when the 60 years of this treaty, um, the Germany-Turkey treaty um, had its uh, its anniversary, its 60 year anniversary, uh, somehow, you know, uh, everybody was producing uh, a film about this topic. We weren't the first ones, you know, to uh, do that. Mm -hmm. And so we started in 2017 with uh, two friends, uh, Mehmet Akif Bukatalay and Ufuk Jam. Uh, we co-wrote a script for this documentary and then we started and finished in 2022. Yeah. So I want to ask about the title, which sort of gives these different chapters or sections of the film. So there's love, Deutschmarks, and death. And with love, I think it connects to this idea, what we call hasret, this kind of longing, mm -hmm. this being in exile or far away from one's home. Um, so I'm curious if you can tell me about what this guest worker program was and then what the kind of emotional aspect of that was, what, mm -hmm. what you're talking about when you talk about love there. So in the 1950s, in the mid 1950s, Germany had this uh, economic wonder, uh, how they call it, and uh, all of a sudden they were uh, workers were needed, and uh, Germany couldn't supply them uh, for themselves. So they were uh, they were calling um, workers from south of from the south of Europe, from Italy, from Spain, from Greece, Portugal. Um, and then in 1961, when this wasn't enough, let's say, um, they were calling uh, workers from Turkey as well. And there was a treaty made uh, between the two countries that Turkey would send uh, labor to, uh, to Germany 
And so it started that um, a huge um, amount of people uh, came to Germany to work. And the idea was, you know, they work a couple of years and then they go back, but this <laughs> never happened because mm -hmm. most of them stayed. And so when these people came to Germany, they brought their cultures with them and then also different cultures. And um, and when they then also stayed after the, let's say, yeah, mid 70s, you know, when uh, then really Germany became a, a, a country of migration, uh, there are a huge, like millions of people were living there already uh, with origins from Turkey. And that created a market, basically, mm -hmm. you know, because these people had needs. And I'm also, you know, my parents went in the 70s uh, to Germany. And yeah, we had to, you know, we have to celebrate um, um, weddings and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and so a vivid musical culture uh, developed during that time. Uh, and now I'm at my at the end. I don't know where the start. And now the we're question now we're at Deutschmarks. Ah, yeah. Actually. Okay. So so in the beginning, uh, when we talk about the the, the, the name of the film, mm -hmm. uh, it it comes from a from a poem by Aras Öran, a very um, important figure in German literature, and he has a poem that was later um, turned into a song by Ideal, the German new wave uh, Neue Deutsche Welle band. Mm -hmm. um, they sang it in phonetic Turkish, which was <laughs> really funny. Um, and so this poem is somehow about um, about how they came here, uh, about this, this this migration topic. And I mean, and then we, we, we use the poem and, and split the film into three parts. And Ashk, the love part is basically about really people um, being uh, in a random country where they don't know the language uh, and so and the culture and they're far from their home and from their family so um, they're really longing for them and so they're listening to you know songs that are about that um, we have this Ashik culture in uh, Turkey or in Anatolia not only in Turkey um, and Ashiks also go to Germany to work and they sing then about the problems over there mm -hmm. and about the daily routines they have and about uh, how they were treated back then. Um, so some artists um, become uh, famous over this, over uh, the fact that they are singing songs about Germany. Um, Aşık Metin Türkürs is one of those uh, Aşıks and then also uh, the Nighting Nightingale of Cologne, Yüksel mm -hmm. Özkasap. Because Yüksel Özkasap, Özkasap, she sings songs like um, Nasıl oldu, yol, oldu da yolum düştü Kölüne, you know, how come I came to Cologne, mm -hmm. you know, which is very much related to Germany. Or uh, songs like um, a song from Aşık Mahsuni Şerif, uh, Alamanya Gardaşımı Geri Ver. You know, Germany, give me back my brother. Mm -hmm. So these songs that were related to this, uh, to the migration to Germany, became very popular back then. Um, and my film basically um, talks about about this music on the one hand, and on the other hand, you know how this music was embedded in this political and so sociological. Mm -hmm. um, a framing that you know these people were uh, called Germany, you know, um, and so to understand the the lyrics, we somehow have to understand our the lives of of um, people who migrated to Germany and what happened to them, you know, and so I'm somehow putting this together, the songs, and then also the. Uh, the core uh, political issues mm -hmm. that, that were there, and I'm bringing it into the today, the story. So when we go to the, so Ashk was this part with mm -hmm. Hasret, and the Mark part is about, uh, on the one hand, you know, how was the money earned, and on the other hand, well, how was it spent? So the earning part, we talk about, uh, in the earning part, we talk about the uh, very bad conditions in the factories, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and we're talking about the year 1973 when there was the big oil crisis in the mm -hmm. in the entire world and there was a big recession in Germany um, and a lot of um, uh, workers uh, from Turkey or that they were the first ones who were fired basically um, and that in 1973 there were these um, so-called wild strikes you know strikes that weren't back backed up by the unions or uh, so uh, the Turkish workers or the workers with uh, from Turkey, they 
um, they did their own strikes. Um, so that's the reason why they were called wild. Um, and then also they achieved things they um, through that, which is an important thing, I think. Um, so this is the mark, uh, the earning part, and this goes along with uh, music by um, an artist called Jem Karaj, everybody knows mm -hmm. him in Turkey, but who then uh, did an album in Germany, in German, you know, so again, the story of, you know, how Germany um, or being in Germany, you know, uh, somehow um, alters the music you do. Mm -hmm. you it know? didn't just remain the same. They were no. influenced by what was going on and started to perform in German. And yeah. mm -hmm, exactly, it's developing somehow. Mm -hmm. And then on the on the spending the money part, mm -hmm. you know, we go into the <laughs> casino culture, into the music business, into the music business basically, and talk about you know how this um, how after um, also a lot of people earned some money and uh, became uh, let's say not wealthy, but you know somehow. Mm, not poor anymore, <laughs> <laughs> um, that there was this culture of spending the money, you know, um, with a lot of verve, I'd say. Mm -hmm. and these big <laughs> weddings, there's images in the documentary of people throwing bills in the air and things like that happening. Yeah, yeah. things like that, exactly. And the death part is then in the 80s when um, the discrimination and yeah, the racism, you know, grew rapidly in Germany against um, the migrated people. Um, and then in the 90s, then it, it made a peak with arson attacks. And so we're talking about, about that time and uh, we are then telling how uh, the second and third generation of um, us, you know, my generation, how um, musicians of my generation then also developed um, hip hop that was then um, sang or rapped in Turkish, Kurdish and in German. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the birth of, of hip hop um, is basically the end of the music of the of the documentary. Because mm -hmm. a new chapter starts at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the story that comes after that is a new, new yeah, film. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and can you tell me a little bit more about how rap is intersected with those racist attacks? You talked about the arson attacks. This mm -hmm. building, I think, that was set on fire with the Turkish family and these neo-Nazi movements. How rap responded to that? Groups like Cartel. And mm -hmm. So in the 1980s, uh, when hip hop music came to Germany for the first time, we working class kids, we really embraced that music because we knew it's about us too. Uh, um, so when we listened to, let's say, um, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five to the message, you know, so uh, the content of that of that track you know is you know you can adapt it one to one to germany because we were the generation or we were you know we were as uh, people from turkey we were discriminated in you know in all areas in education you know in the structure there was structural racism basically and then also the daily racism that we uh, had to live with and somehow also to be suffered from this it's a big trauma we're still suffering from this because racism didn't end in germany right or in europe in in general um, so when this music came there, we uh, somehow we were the underdogs in Germany and we knew, you know, this was, you know, some of, we were the people who were addressed, you know, by this music and mm -hmm. we embraced it. In 1982, there was a this big breakdance um, wave or this breakdance, breakdance was really vogue and we even had a breakdance show on television you know <laughs> so everybody was uh, you know the breakdance craze um, had started in germany but this was just for a very short time and then uh, but the working class kids and not just you know people from turkey but also all the other guests it was called gastarbeiter but then we called them migrants um all the kids from ex Yugoslavia, Italy, you know, Spain, Portugal, Greece, uh, Turkish kids, Kurdish kids, uh, all together created um, or tried to, you know, to do uh, the, the, the same kind of music, you know, as you know the one that we were listening to, mm -hmm. and there weren't really a lot of possibilities to, you know, to being a DJ, for instance, for because for being a DJ you need uh, records. Um, but we, you know, like working class kids, we didn't have any money, you know, so um, what was, and for graffiti, you needed the, 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 the cans. Mm -hmm. um, so mostly what we did was uh, breakdancing because it didn't cost anything <laughs> <laughs> and rapping, of course, yeah. <laughs> basically. And so there, there, 
uh, an underground music scene um, had started in the 80s with jam sessions all over Germany um, and people would go there and you know and and the different cities would have their different artists and um, it was a yeah a big underground movement let's say you know uh, somehow ruled by working class kids kids and then later um, because first they everybody was rapping in English, sure, mm -hmm. you know, and then later they started to trying it in in German first, and then they started to trying it in in the other languages, and and somehow it worked, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then in the different uh, cities of Germany there were different groups like uh, Karakan from Nuremberg, and then uh, Jinai Shebeke, then Islamic Force from Berlin, Volkante, uh, DJ Mahmoud uh, from Fran from the Frankfurt area, and these were all different uh, schools also, you know, <laughs> different styles uh, they had developed everybody. Um, so when then racism or the, 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 let's put it like this. Um, so everybody, all these kids, the second and third generation kids in Germany, they had also, you know, things to say because they were uh, not very uh, pleased about the situation they were living in, with, about the discrimination, about being at, in the poor schools, you know, about, you know, being in, in uh, living in ghettos and stuff. So that went as lyrics you know into the songs you know this um being uh the underdogs thing like being the karakafa mm -hmm. you know um so most of these the content of these songs were all somehow related to uh, what was happening with the second generation basically mm -hmm. and that's how um then also bands like islamic force came out and also then later you know in the mid 90s then cartel too mm -hmm. you know and they had the problem as i see it because they were also um especially with cartel people said that they are nationalists you know because in the 90s especially in turkey you know you can't um show a turkish flag you know without not being called a nationalist mm -hmm. it means something know? really different here exactly yeah. but in in germany it meant something else mm -hmm. in germany it meant something like empowerment you know just saying you know stop this violence you know we're turkish people and we're proud of it doesn't mean the same thing as in germany mm -hmm. and so there is this um still this discussion about that you know so but for us kids in 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 germany it was something uh, listening to these bands you know meant uh, some kind of emancipation also. Definitely. And we're almost out of time, but I want to mm -hmm. ask you last about something more broad. So this mm -hmm. is interesting thread in your work, which is that, you know, you have a, a, another film about music, mm -hmm. you have a film about the Yeshicham local film industry. So you talk about pop culture and art, but there's always a kind of political element to it because you, you don't really separate those things. So I'm curious why those topics interest to you and how you mm -hmm. approach them. I mean, you can't, I think, and that, that's why I like your, this, this uh, format of yours, when pop and politics, you know, you never can separate it from each other. Mm. Um, and popular culture always was related to what was going on uh, in the society, basically. My first film, Arabex, for instance, talks about this phenomenon of Arabesque music in Germany, uh, in Turkey, uh, that came up in the 60s as a kind of protest music. Um, there was this big, um, exodus into the big cities in Turkey because all the industry in the 50s was somehow built around the big cities. So, mm -hmm. and on the countryside, there was just no work and uh, people came here. That's how Istanbul, <laughs> you know, grew that much. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, you know, they, they, they needed an expression. They couldn't just, um, just continue with their folkloristic music in the big cities. They needed something new and Arabesque was, you know, their um, way of of um, expressing, you know, their hasret and their um, the longing, but exactly longings and and all different things, also mm -hmm. sexuality, mm -hmm. all these things. And then this music somehow changed over the years. You know, it became something different. And after the military coup in 1980, especially, it became something different, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And this is this is what I'm telling in my film because if I would do just you know, imagine I'm doing a, a documentary film on Arabesque music uh, without telling mm -hmm. uh, the backstory of it. So what yeah. would it be? I mean, it, it would just be, you know, just showing the artists and, you know, saying, oh, look 
how nice or how sad is that music, you mm -hmm. know, so this can't be. And in my other movie, uh, remake, remix, rip off, I'm talking about copy culture in uh, Turkish now because we always say, yeah, Turkish films, they're so bad, they're all Arak, you know, this, they're all copied, they're mm -hmm. just, and I was like, nah, maybe not, you know, why not looking into the Yeshilcan business and, and look on the, under how, on, under which circumstances these films were made, basically, mm -hmm. and what was it like, what was the censorship about, basically, and the, all these things, and so I made and this the economics film. of it as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, how were these films all financed, you know, <laughs> uh, so, you know, how, could producers and directors, you know, how much could they move from all these, you know, pre-prepared of all these films that were um, produced successfully in the past. So they would, you know, just continue doing it, which yeah. is very much related to the TV series industry in Turkey today as true, well. True, true. You know, which we, you know, in the film, uh, that's also a topic. And also the, uh, the demolition of the MX cinema is mm -hmm. a big topic in the movie, because this is also about how do we, um, do we preserve our, uh, our past, our cultural past, and also what about the archive situation mm -hmm. in Germany, you know, in Turkey, sorry. And Love, Deutsch, Marks and Death is the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, basically, um, you know, a film about music, yes, but not only about music, because that just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I love about your films. You, you enter through film or music or things like that, but you learn a whole bunch about Turkey or the diaspora and the politics, the economics, all of it, the society. So... Yeah, it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on the show.